Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brie. Today is another reading vlog. And I am reading The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. So we're actually, my sister-in-law and my mother-in-law and I are all doing a reading book club. And so we're actually going to be FaceTiming on Wednesday since they're in Michigan. So we're going to talk about our thoughts and feelings. So I'm currently on page 150 and I'm liking it so far. I really like the voice of the older people so you get a couple perspectives you get like there's a character Joyce and she's writing in her diary about everything and she's one of the retired uh, people who are part of this jigsaw Thursday murder club in the jigsaw room so she's writing like about her experience with that in a diary type format and then you're also getting just third person narration of different characters so we've seen like the cop we've gotten this one guy who owns a lot of property um and it's like it involved with the guy who died and then also the some of the people at part of the thursday murder club but the only like inside perspective you're really getting is joyce's from her diary but everything else like you still are getting their thoughts but it's through a third person lens but i really enjoy it i think it's fun and i'm interested to see like how the mystery unfolds. I just like the dynamic of the retired folks and like they're all good at different things and just their little interests and hobbies and the community itself is part of it and yeah so I'm really liking it. I would say like it's very endearing and it's a fun take on like a murder mystery sleuthing kind of book that I really enjoy so I'm really loving it and I can't wait to finish it. Today's Tuesday. Uh, I started in the vlog a little late but we're reading it tomorrow so I have got to make a lot of progress so I'm gonna make hopefully another 100 pages today and then 100 pages tomorrow to finish it or more but once I usually get to like the 100 page left mark I kind of fly through books because I tend to want to know what's gonna happen so yeah and then after I finish this I'm not really sure what I'm gonna pick up I think I'm going to pick up The Perfect Room by Shonora Williams to have the third book for the Blackathon under my belt and it sounds really good. It's a mystery and I have it on ebook and I don't know too much about it. I think I'm just going to go into it not knowing anything. So I'll probably read those two this week and then who knows. But I've also been kind of in a mood for something. I'm not really sure. So we'll see what I end up reading but for sure gonna finish this and then we'll go from there. Good morning. Welcome back. So I just finished uh, the Thursday Murder Club, Oop. <laughs> The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I don't want to give too much of my thoughts right now. I just wanted to update and say that I did finish it because I want to have the discussion with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law and then come back with like more thoughts because I think it would be fun to see. Well, maybe I'll give thoughts now and see how my thoughts change as we talk about it. So initially, I think I'm going to give this like a three and a half star, four star. I thought it was really interesting. I think that it deals a lot with like aging and also just talking about like getting older and losing people and stuff. So I thought that was like a nice added part to the story. I think the mystery itself was like interesting enough. I think my reasoning for maybe a 3.5 is just a little slow for me, but I always say that about like detective sleuthing kind of mysteries as they just are slow. They're not a thriller action pack. So they always end up a 3.5, but maybe I should like really adjust my reading for murder mysteries, cozy mysteries, because like they're, the point of them is different. They're not supposed to be thrilling and stuff like that. It's more of just like methodical, like trying to figure out what's happening and they are just slower in nature. So maybe I should be reading them on a different scale of what I would rate thrillers. So yeah, so I think I might actually give it a four, but we'll see once we I talk to my little book club. I will say for this um, that a trigger warning, like a major trigger warning is suicide in this. And um, it's brought up a couple times throughout the book. And so I just, I want to say that for people who do struggle with mental health and with that because this might not be something you would want to read about and if that's the case like I think it's good that you would know going into it so I wanted to give that trigger warning for people and yeah um I will continue on with the series I think it's a fun sleuthing like 
kind of book. So it's like another one to add to my sleuth detective type mysteries. So I'm really happy I read it. So anyway, I'm going to just work for a bit. We're meeting at 6.30 to FaceTime. So I will catch up with you then. Um, but I do, before I go, I want to show you something. Okay, so a couple months back, we had found, I had found this at a Goodwill and it was only like $30 and I loved it so much. It has like a little key for here that it came with and I just thought it looked so pretty. It's definitely my style. So I immediately picked it up, but there was only one there. And you know when just like everything aligns? So we went into Goodwill to find frames for our wedding to, I'm doing the signage and everything and I wanna put them in like these gold frames and the thrift store is always like a really good place to find those. So we went and we struck out on those, but I'm, we're going down an aisle and I just hear Doe go, <gasps> and I was like, whipped my head around and I saw this and I kid you not, I beelined it. I cut off a couple who had like a huge cart because I was like, are they going for this? They better not be. I need to get there first, <laughs> which I felt bad, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So then we saw the other one just literally like six months later was there. So now we have the matching set and oh my gosh, let's see if you, it just looks so nice. I definitely need to figure out what to do in this corner because we used to have, um, I'll show you, we used to have this over here and then a longer table and it was just too crowded but it was the only thing that worked. So now it's here and I think it looks pretty good there. So it's my grandma's and so like I love it, I wanted to keep it here but I just didn't want it to be right in this little area. So I think eventually I'd like to put a little reading chair there but and the cord is for our heated blanket because I'm freezing all the time so I want to like have something that wouldn't show that as much but yeah it looks so nice and I've got my little stool that we pull out to help me get in and out of bed when I'm in a lot of pain and my hot water bottle under there and it like fits perfectly in so I'm just so happy I think it looks so nice and it's just like they're matching and I never thought I was gonna find that one. The only problem with this one is you can see, it, uh, hold on, let's see if I can turn this up. So you can see there's like a little like keyhole. Well, this one's missing it and we didn't notice that when we got it, but like I would have still got it anyway because <laughs> a minor inconvenience. So I'm gonna try to like look and see if there's something online I can like put in there that is like a replica of something, but they're so well made too. like. These had to have been nice tables. It's just one of those things where I'm like, it was just so well taken care of. I'm just so happy. Now, the boys are a little upset because they loved the other table to walk on, but they scratched it all up because they would play on it in the night and leap out like that. <laughs> but now they can't go from table to table. They can just be in that one, so. You tell me you're scared You tell me you're weak But I know you're stronger Than what you think and we're supposed to have book club at a little after 6 30 but I'm perpetually early to things because I just do on them until they're gonna happen <laughs> so I'm like if I have one thing to do during the day I like think about it the whole day and then it just feels like the whole day's waiting for that thing that I have to do especially when it's like meeting with people or like yeah social things I don't get like really bad anxiety about like talking to people or anything I just always just feel like weird in social situations but I don't have like an anxious feeling but that just leads me to like think about 
the event for a lot going up to it. Also with chronic illness, just not knowing if I'm gonna get sick, it just like makes me have to think about like my whole day if I have to go do something. But all that to say that I am really early. So I just got my laptop set up because we're gonna FaceTime. So I'm gonna work on more blogging stuff, uh, finish writing a um, blog post and maybe I'll read a little bit. I got um, The Perfect Ruin by Shonora Williams on my phone. Noah has my iPad and I can't get it on the Nook. So I'm just reading it on my phone, which isn't my favorite way to read. It's just a little too small for me. So I might get that up if I could get it on the computer somehow. Um, but he should be home soon anyway. And yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and hang out. I lit a candle, which is like the first time I've lit a candle in a really long time. I don't know why I just forget about about them. So anyway, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So enjoy a little montage. <laughs> Hello again. So I am now reading two other books. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone because I'm trying to see what percentage I am. So I started reading uh, The Perfect Room by Shonora Williams, and that's the book click for Blackathon. And I have it on ebook on Scribd. I'm trying Scribd for 30 days to see how I like it because I do like ebooks. I don't do a lot of audiobooks, but it's basically if you don't know, you like pay $10 a month and then you can get audiobooks, ebooks, magazines, other things, but it's more almost like the library where you can just check out as many as you want, but you don't have to wait for like holds to come in. So of course the app is going to be just like really slow. It's usually not slow for me. So I'm on page 71 of 350 in The Perfect Ruin. The one thing I will say is like Noah was using the iPad for work because he has to use it sometimes and my Nook is too old, so it's not compatible with Scribd or with Hoopla, which is a um, library app. And so I couldn't read on my iPad, and I don't enjoy reading on my phone because it's just too small for me. So that was the only downside, but I mean, it's not a big deal. I have, like, I can read physical books and stuff like that. So it was just one of those, like, little inconveniences. So I've been reading on my phone, but I just find I don't 
stick with it as long because I don't want to read on my phone and it's just so small like the thought is too small for me um, if you can't tell by me wearing my glasses all the time I have really bad eyesight so even with my glasses on I sometimes have to like squint to read it and it's not the best for that but so I'm about I don't know what it doesn't tell me what percentage but 71 out of 350 I like it so far it's it so far it's okay to me so we're basically following this girl who had some event that ruined her life and now she's trying to enact revenge on the person who ruined her life but my main problem with it so far is that like and I'm only 71 pages in but she's like right this whole story is being told to her therapist because all you know is really she had like court mandated therapy um from whatever happened and she like is writing to her therapist about how she went about getting this revenge when she found out who the name of the person who ruined her life was but you're never told like what happened yet so like she's like trying to get revenge and usually I'd be like okay yeah like that was messed up now you're getting revenge and I'd be like more on board with the character but I think because I don't I don't know what was done to her so it's kind of like what was so bad that makes you want to have revenge on this person or is it going to be like a book where maybe it's about like her own issues and like her obsession and stuff with this so I'm hoping like as the story goes on we get more of like what happened because so far like really nothing all you know is that there's therapy so I'm reading that and I will definitely be continuing it so the second book I'm reading is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley this is due back soon and it's one that I, it sounds really good it's basically and I'm only, by the way, I'm only eight pages in, so not far at all. Um, but all I know is that there's this, like, ca cabin. I think it's supposed to be near in Scotland. No, not in Scotland. Yeah, in, in the Scottish wilderness. And um, it's, like, most of the year it just is, like, this family-owned place. And no one really gets to stay there. But once a year they open it up for people to stay. And there's only a select number of spots, so it's, like, people try to get in and they have to book like a year out so this friend group who sounds like they were friends in college um the wife or girlfriend of one of the guy friends um is like put it together because she wants to become like more a part of their group and so she booked this for them and now they're all going to this remote wilderness cabin and you know from like the first page that someone who works at the cabin Two people who work at the cabin find a body and then it flashes to this friend group and it said like two days before so i think the premise is basically that these people all go to this cabin and then one by one they start dying so you don't know if it's a friend one of the friends is killing off people or if it's someone at the cabin doing it and you're getting multiple perspectives because i just ended the one chapter of emma who is the main like the girlfriend of the guy that's friends with everyone and then now you're getting another perspective, which is Katie, which is one of the college friends. So, yeah, you're just getting multiple POVs, which is something I really enjoy. I really enjoy, like, friend dynamic stories. Like, In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, which I read recently in a reading vlog, is, like, was, like, five out of five for me. So I'm hoping this one is just as good. And I, the writing is a little more, like, choppy than I am used to, but I like it. I find it really interesting. And I'm excited to read more yeah so these are the two I'm reading and I am excited to get those done I we had the book club with my sister-in-law mother-in-law and that was really fun I did decide fully on four stars for the Thursday murder club because I think I'm I need to start like rating it based on like other cozy mysteries and not on like thrillers in general because I think it's unfair to like put them together because you're I'm reading them for different reasons uh, we had a good discussion. It was just fun. So I think we're going to pick another book. And we're each going to pick a book and then vote on what we want to read. And it was just fun. Like, we got to FaceTime and stuff. And so I really had a good time. And happy we did that. So now I'm going to read these things. I'm going to get blog posts finished and do some other stuff. And then I'll get to reading. But yeah, I've been rambling for a bit. So I'm going to leave it here and I'll check back in later. never the one to write up a song for just anyone I, I was always the one to find myself lost in old conversations oh cause I've always been told that things will unfold if you keep on waiting 
But then you came along and proved me all wrong. I was so mistaken. Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. And I feel so free. Oh, my sweet baby. So stuck, I kept on playing my part, wanted to give up 'cause nothing was changing. But with you, it's so clear. And now that you're here, I see colors in every spectrum. Guess I finally learned my lesson. 'Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. So free, oh my sweet baby. And I think to myself, and I'm thinking out loud, we won't need nothing else for the rest of our time. And I know it so well, I will always be by your side. The pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me wanna try forever. I feel so free. So while Noah's fishing right now in Stardew, I will update you on the book. I am now at page 140, and I'm liking it. It's still like suspenseful you just know someone's been murdered but you still don't know who and you don't know who did it but you're getting multiple pers perspectives but you're not getting perspectives of everyone so there's like I think 13 people there total and I think I'm my math might be wrong but I think we're only getting like five perspectives I'm enjoying it I am gonna probably keep reading later but we're playing Stardew right now it's not as thrillery like there's not a lot of like suspense to me and I won't I will say I don't like the friend dynamics as much as I liked them in in my dreams to hold a knife I just think she did a really good job with writing friends and friend dynamics um and these characters I just don't connect with as much but I'm still enjoying it so I will update you when I've finished and let you know my final thoughts hello welcome back so I just finished the hunting party by Lucy Foley like literally a minute ago and I like it I think I'm gonna give it Mm, four stars so it had a lot of the same qualities as in my dreams I held a knife but I just felt like the characters didn't click as much for me as they did in in my dreams I held a knife but I liked the setting that they're in the remote part of Scotland and they kind of can't leave because of snow I liked that isolated setting a lot I guessed a decent amount of like what happened it wasn't a five star for me in that sense like I wasn't shocked by the ending I enjoyed the ride but just it just wasn't as good as in my dreams I hold a knife and maybe if I had read this before in my dreams I hold a knife I would have felt more excited about this one but because I just read that I think this felt a little short for me but I did like it and I think it is a good one if you like isolated thrillers or you're looking for something like in my dreams I hold a knife a uh, friend dynamics going back to college and just like secrets being revealed. I think this one would be a decent one to pick up. It's just not a five star or anything that's I think blew me out of the water, but it was enjoyable and I don't feel like I wasted my time reading it. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I'm going to end the vlog here and I hope you enjoyed. And if you've read this book or uh, the other book, well, it's been a long week. What did I read? Uh, oh, The Thursday Murder Club. Leave a comment down below. I'm still reading The Perfect Ruin by Shinora Williams. I'm probably hmm, maybe 100 pages into that. I just read on my phone at night. Um, I really just don't like reading on my phone this way, so I think I'm going to try to get the iPad and read it on there because I think I'll enjoy it a little more. I just, reading from my phone is just not for me, so I've been taking a little slower, and I still don't know why 
this woman, like, I don't know what this woman did to ruin the main character's life. So, like, I'm still feeling a little, like, disconnected from the main character and her motivations. But I'm hoping that that will pick up as time goes on. So, yeah. I really loved Thursday Murder Club. That was a four star for me. And then this is also a four star. So, not a bad reading week. And I will check in in the next reading vlog. Thank you.